In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Good morning, everybody. And it's this, this, there's three reasons why it's good to be here today. The first reason is because uh, Peter's having a rest. And I think that's great, isn't it? He, he works so hard. And uh, it's great that he's taking this week off. Uh, the second reason is because he's away, that gives me the opportunity of coming. And I always feel so welcome when I come here. For those of you who don't know me, either here or, or perhaps online, my name is Father Nicholas. And it's always a privilege to come here and, and to share with you. But the, the third reason why today is significant is much more important than both the others, and that is that we're celebrating perhaps what was the, perhaps the most cosmic event. Well, the, it was the most cosmic event that has ever happened when God sent a message to Mary and asked her, would she become the mother of his son? It's impossible to think of anything bigger and greater than that as we celebrate the Feast of the Annunciation today, which is transferred. It's normally uh, celebrated, as you know, on the 25th of March, but the 25th of March this year was in Holy Week. So it's, it's important, though, that the, the link between the Annunciation and Easter is kept, so we're celebrating it today. So for all those reasons, it's wonderful to be here. And I always know how welcome you make me feel and make everybody feel. And I think we've got a visitor today. Is Richard, I think it's your, I don't know whether you, you've probably been here many times. Right, well, well uh, he's come to talk about the SVP. And uh, it's great to have, uh, have you here today. You're very welcome. It's a very welcoming community, this not just here, but also online. It's, it's wonderful that so many people are able to join us, those who are watching now. And then some of them, you know, people, friends of mine tell me, well, we don't always manage to watch it at the time, but we watch it afterwards. So it's, it's spreading, and it's like the Holy Spirit. It's a sign of the Holy Spirit. So enough talking. Um, I talk more than Peter does. That's for those of you who... who <laughs> he would tell me off for that. So let's begin by admitting our weakness, our failures, the times when we forget God, and ask for forgiveness. So, brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ have, mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And today, because it's a feast, we, we sing this, or say this beautiful prayer together, the Gloria. Glory, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. You alone are the Lord Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And let us pray. O God, who willed that your word should take on the reality of human flesh in the womb of the Virgin Mary, grant, we pray, that we who confess our Redeemer to be God and man may merit to become partakers even in his divine nature. 
who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, for ever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> A reading from the prophet Isaiah. The Lord spoke to Ahaz and said, Ask the Lord your God for a sign for yourself, coming either from the depth of shale or from the heights above. No, Ahaz answered, I will not put the Lord to the test. Then Isaiah said, Listen now, house of David. Are you not satisfied with trying the patience of men without, paying the, without trying the patience of my God too? The Lord himself therefore will give you a sign. It is this. The maiden is with child and will soon give birth to a son whom she will call Emmanuel, a name which means God is with us. The word of the Lord. Here I am, Lord, I come to do your will. Here I am, Lord, I come to do your will. You do not ask for sacrifice and offerings, but an open ear. You do not ask for holocaust and victim. Instead, here am I. Here I am. In the scroll of the book, it stands written that I should do your will. My God, I delight in your law in the depth of my heart. Your justice I have proclaimed in the great assembly. My lips I have not sealed. You know it, O Lord. I have not hidden your justice in my heart, but declared your faithful help. I have not hidden your love and your truth from the great assembly. Second reading of the Hebrews. God's will was for us to be made holy by the offering of his body, made once and for all by Jesus Christ. Bull's blood and goat's blood are useless for taking away sins. And this is what Christ said on coming into the world. You who wanted no sacrifice or oblation, prepare the body for me. You took no pleasant pleasure in holocausts or sacrifices for sin. Then I said, just as I was commanded, in the scroll of the book. Here, God, I am. I am coming to obey your will. Notice that he says first, you did not want what the law lays down as the things to be offered. That is, the sacrifices, the oblations, the holocausts, and the sacrifices for sin. And you took no pleasure in them. And then he says, here I am. I am coming to obey your will. He is abolishing the first sword to replace it with the second. And this was for us to be made holy by the offering of his body, made once and for all by Jesus Christ, the word of the Lord. Please be upstanding for the gospel. Alleluia, alleluia. The word became flesh. He lived among us and we saw his glory. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The angel, Gabriel, was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man named Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. He went in and said to her, 
Rejoice, so highly favored. The Lord is with you. She was deeply disturbed by these words and asked herself what this greeting could mean. But the angel said to her, Mary, do not be afraid. You have won God's favor. Listen, you are to conceive and bear a son, and you must name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David. He will rule over the house of Jacob forever, and his reign will have no end. Mary said to the angel, but how can this come about since I am a virgin? The Holy Spirit will come upon you, the angel answered, and the power of the Most High will cover you with its shadow. And so the child will be holy and will be called Son of God. Know this too, your kinswoman Elizabeth has in her old age herself conceived a son. A she whom people called barren is now in her sixth month, for nothing is impossible to God. I am the handmaid of the Lord, said Mary. Let what you have said be done to me. And the angel left her. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, how do, how do we see uh, a connection between today's special feast and this season that we're in, this wonderful season of, of 50 days when we're celebrating the, the resurrection? And I find it helpful to, to, to look for connections by remembering that in a very real way, God is a poet. I don't mean a poet like somebody like Shakespeare or Wordsworth, as great as these poets were, God is even greater because even Shakespeare or Wordsworth or whoever, all they could do was to think what they wanted to say in their poem and write it down on a page, which is wonderful. And it's, it's so wonderful that we can often go back to it ourselves time and time again and begin to see what the poet was getting at. But with God, God's poetry is not written with words on a page, it's written with human lives. God is so much greater, and his poetry is, is a poetry that's written with human lives. So if we look at the readings today, I think we can see the connection between Easter and, and what, is, what we're celebrating in the way that the, the poetry that, that God is, is sharing with us in the readings comes to life. In the first reading, it's a bit dark. Isaiah's poetry, God speaking through Isaiah, it's at a time when Jerusalem was under siege, um, there were people were attacking, and the, the leader was, was, was panicking, and the people were panicking. So God was feeling sorry for them. So he said to Isaiah, he says, well, go along, reassure them, and, and tell them, Tell them I'll give them a sign. So as we heard in the reading, the Isaiah goes along and he says, listen, stop worrying. It's all going to be okay. Just ask God for the sign that he wants to give you. And Ahaz, who was, who was the leader, was so full of panic, so full of himself, he wasn't really listening to what Isaiah was saying. And so he sort of said, no, I'm not, going to, I'm not going to ask for a sign. I, I'm more worried about what's happening now. And then Isaiah says, well, he says, he says, not only are you getting on people's nerves in the way that you're dealing with this, but you're getting on God's nerves now as well, because whether you like it or not, I'm going to give you a sign. And he gives that beautiful sign of, of saying, there's going to be in the future, there's going to be a child is born. A woman's going to have a baby, and that baby is going to be the sign of peace and of joy and of God's reign forever. And that's what that first reading was about. So it was God's poetry spoken through a very real situation, dark poetry, but nonetheless very real. When you think about it like that, you can begin to see some of the connections. Everything is interconnected with God. It's always pulling things together. So then if you look at the, the beautiful poetry um, in the gospel, 
Luke's, Luke was a, real, a really poetic writer. And it's a total contrast with Isaiah. The colors are not dark. It's much more vibrant. There's a warmth there. And we've all got pictures in our mind because it's inspired people down the years, artists down the years, to actually draw what happened or paint what had happened. We've got this image of however we see Gabriel coming in. And we see Mary. Sometimes we see her in a pious situation, sort of kneeling down and saying prayers. At other times, I think, we, you, I've seen pictures where it sort of shows a, a bit all over the place. She might have been peeling potatoes or whatever the equivalent was, and suddenly this angel comes in. So it's no wonder that Luke saw this, and she was a bit surprised, you know. And that took her by, I mean, imagine if an angel came in to you and actually said that, you know, I mean, God almighty, I don't know what I'd do. I'd, I'd probably collapse. But the, the angel reassures Mary and sort of says, well, you know, something special is going to happen to you. And that's why it's such an important feast day today. Because here's, here's the almighty God coming to Mary and asking her, will it be okay if I send the Holy Spirit and you bear a son? And will you call him Jesus? And he's going to be the... Imagine being asked that. Now, unlike in the first reading, Mary listens and Mary, Mary hears what the angel's saying, and even though she can't understand it, and, and very legitimately sort of asks the question, well, how's this going to be? She's probably thinking, what on earth am I going to tell Joseph? And then there's a beautiful thing at the end of the poem, I think, where, and the angel, before he goes, he's sort of, he's, he, he's, he's calmed her down, he's given her confidence, and he said, well, by the way, your, your elderly cousin, Elizabeth, who everybody said she's never going to have a child, she's, she's six months on. And I think it's a beautiful, I mean, the, the bit in the gospel that follows, we didn't have it this morning, the bit in the gospel that follows is, is Mary, we see her going off to the visitation. She's off along the road, I'm going to see. There's probably an instinct of, of wanting, in all the confusion she's feeling, she wants to talk to another woman. And she wants to talk to another woman who's, who's probably had the same sort of shock. And if you remember in the gospel how, how when they meet, Elizabeth sort of said she could feel the child inside her, John the Baptist, jump for joy. And I mean, none of us, certainly no men, and, and those of us who are not privileged to be a mother, um, how on earth, it must be so wonderful to sort of feel when you're pregnant, the actual moving of a child within you. I'm sure it can be terrifying as well, and I know it's not, not easy, but what a wonderful thing. And this is what Mary was feeling. But she was feeling it and sort of saying, and somehow this son is going to be, he's going to be, he's going to be the, the king forever. I don't think she could even begin to grasp it, even when she was talking with Elizabeth. And she was probably saying, well, how am I going to explain it to Joseph if she hadn't already told him? So it's a beautiful human, um, human story. But in the middle of it, God is working. And I think that that's the, that's the reason why we're having this feast day today, because that's what the resurrection's about, that's what Easter is about, that God is working through all of us all the time. And in, in that reading that, that Patrick read at the end, the, 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 the reading from Hebrews, it's, it's just proclaiming that. It's sort of saying, forget about the past now. Look at what's happening now. I'm sending my son into your world and he's going to be with you always. And that's what that reading of Hebrews was, was really about. There's all sorts of examples. Um, I'm always afraid of going on too long because I know I talk too much. My mother, always, my mother talked a lot, and I think I take after my mother on that and go around in circles. But there are a couple of things I was thinking about um, in terms of preparing for the Mass today. And I don't know, I'll, I'll share them with you anyway. Um, one is about how human poetry sometimes tries to mirror what God's poetry is about. And there was a famous poet, poet who lived for a time uh, as a priest uh, in a neighboring parish here. You probably, you'll guess who I'm talking about, probably. In St. Francis Xavier's parish, just down the road from here, there was a famous poet read, who, who wrote, he was a Jesuit, and at times he, he used to get a bit depressed, and at times life would sort of um, be heavy on him. He'd probably identify with that first reading 
where ACAS was, was sort of saying, what's it all about? And I came across a poem by him the other day, which I'd never read before. It's quite a long one. and Don't worry, I'm not going to read it all for you. But it's, it's, it's a poem that he gave the title to. He called it, funny title, Non Dumb. Now, Non Dumb are two Latin words. He's using the Latin. And Non Dumb in Latin means not yet. Something's still coming. So he decided to call this poem Non Dumb. And it starts off really a bit down in the depths. Let me just read you a little bit from the first verse. I promise I won't go on too long. It says, this is, this is uh, the poet writing. God, though to thee our psalm we raise, no answering voice comes from the skies. To thee the trembling sinner prays, but no forgiving voice replies. And he's obviously expressing something of his own at times, fears and doubts and where's life going. And, and he's starting off his poem in this rather dark, somber sort of mood. But no, our prayer seems lost in desert ways. Our hymn in the vast silence dies. And he's probably talking about a lot of people who sort of say, what's it all about? How do you make sense of life? How do you watch what's happening on the television, sort of the terrible news that we see all the time? And how do you make sense of it? And I think this is what this poet, poet was thinking about at the beginning. You'd need to read the whole poem to see how it begins to change. And I just want to read you now a little bit from the last verse at the end of it. And he's worked through, he sort of said, you know, is, is, is God really answering? Is it just silence? Is it all just pretend? Or is there something more? And in the last verse, he's, he's sort of coming around, and, and I think he does it beautifully. So this is the last verse. To show thee that thou art, in other words, he's talking to God, to say that God, you are there. To show thee that thou art and near, let patience with her chastening wand dispel the doubt and dry the tear. So he's saying to himself, I know you're there, God. I don't always see you, but help me to get through this. And lead me childlike by the hand, if still in darkness, not in fear. And then the last, very last lines. Speak. Whisper to my watching heart one word. And then he has this beautiful image. Speak, whisper to my watching heart one word, as when a mother speaks soft when she sees her infant start, till dimpled joy steals o'er its cheeks. Then to behold thee as thou art, I'll wait till morn eternal breaks. So he's saying, just as a mother holding her new baby, tries to get the baby to smile, speaks softly to it, and eventually, perhaps, a smile comes, or it's just a dimple on the face. It's a beautiful, gentle image. And he's saying that's how God comes to us, if only we learn to listen. His name, as you probably would have guessed, would have, uh, is, is Jared Manley Hopkins, wonderful Jesuit poet who's um, got, written such beautiful poetry. One very last thing, honestly, I promise them, and that's, that's an image of how Easter is real today. And, and it's this vestment. I've been admiring this vestment this last week when I've seen Peter wearing it. And I spoke to him on the phone last night. And I, says, um, I said, where did you get that vestment from? Oh, he says, it's a friend has made it for me. Apparently she's been in hospital uh, recently. And happily is out now. And I said, I said, it really is beautiful. I said, I hope you've left it. I hope you've not sort of taken it away with you. He said, oh, he says it'll be there. So it's, it, I'm, I'm proud to be wearing it this morning. And what I like about it is, is the actual words on it, these embroidered words, which is again going back to poetry. John's poetry, John, the, 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 apostle, the evangelist John, at the beginning of his gospel, and the word became flesh and dwelt amongst us. And I thought that sums it all up. I've got one slight correction I would make to it. I mean, this is completely correct. I mean, it's beautifully embroidered and exactly as the gospel puts it. But I'd, I'd change it and sort of say, and the word became flesh and dwells among us. Because if we're just saying he dwelt, 
we're perhaps in danger sometimes of saying, well, that was then, and it was Mary in the Annunciation. No, 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 no. It's now. That's the mystery that we're celebrating, and that's why the Annunciation and the mystery of Easter all comes together. So with apologies for, for going on too long, but, but thank you for listening. And we, we, because it's a feast day, we, we make it a, a little bit more solemn by saying together the creed. So shall we say that now? I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things is Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified and was buried. He began into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and was seated at the right hand of the Father. He that's when you will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the Lord of the Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection of the dead, and life everlasting. Amen. And let's pray now to, to God our Father, through Jesus, but with a special remembrance of his mother, who has such a powerful influence on him. Thinking of Mary and thinking of the challenges she faced and thinking that she was walking the roads of Palestine, it makes it very difficult to think of today's feast without thinking of all those women especially, but women and men and children who are walking have lost their way because the roads of Palestine, many of the roads of Palestine, at least in Gaza, have been destroyed. So let's pray. There was a little item on the news today of the Israeli forces withdrawing from one of the cities, but you, you're never sure. But nonetheless, let's think of that terrible suffering that the people are going through. And let's ask, ask God to send prophets, to send people of peace, to, to change what is a terrible situation for them so that they may experience the joy of God close to them. Lord, hear us. I saw, I saw a little video on, on TikTok the other day, somebody had sent me, and it, it showed um, three or four young Israelis, round about 19, 20-year-olds, and each one of them was saying, we're refusing to go and join the Israeli army because we don't believe in terms of what's actually been happening. And that's causing them all sorts of problems that's causing them this hatred towards them because of, because of the violence that is there. So let's pray for, for those young men and for all who are, who, who are seeking peace rather than violence as, as the answer to, to the problems. Strengthen them, Lord, and give them your, your help. Lord, hear us. And let's pray for ourselves, for our community here. And when I say our community here, I'm including that larger community which wonderfully joins with us, and all those communities who are celebrating the Annunciation today, that, that we will listen to God's word and be inspired by his grace. Lord, hear us. Lord, and let's, let's pray especially for Peter. I'm delighted, as I said at the beginning, that he's having this rest. He's such a wonderful uh, proclaimer of the word, and his faith sort of comes shining through, and he's got so much knowledge as well, we're, we're very grateful to God for giving him to us, but let's, let's hope that he's able to rest this week and uh, we'll come back renewed, as I'm sure he will, on Saturday. So for Peter, Lord, hear us. Lord, And there's the, for the sick, um, really missing Maureen today. Uh, I know Maureen's recovering, uh, but it's, it's, it's good that she's had an operation and is, is feeling better. But there's so many others that you know who have been prayed for. I'll just mention a couple on the list here. Uh, Jill Shaw, Bobby Connor, Claire, Maria, Tom O'Shea, Sheila Kane, Lil Broughton, Will God, Wilf Godwin, Mary O'Brien, 
Mike and Dan Byrne, Peter McKenna, and the list goes on, and I'm sure we would include all those. In. I'd like to add my brother Dennis, who's been diagnosed with, with Alzheimer's, and some other friends uh, who are recovering from illness. Who would you like to mention for those who are sick? So for all these, Lord, be close to them, be close to those who care for them, and bring them relief. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. And for those who have gone on before us, today is the anniversary for me of a, a classmate who was a passionist with me. We, we joined together and he died a few years ago. His name was Charles. May he rest in peace. And may all those who have gone before us, I don't know whether there's anybody recently that has died that we need to remember especially. And anybody want to add anybody? So for all these, Lord, give them eternal rest. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. And again, we pray for all those who are working in, in many ways to, to make sure that we share with one another. I don't know exactly why you're here today, Richard, but I know it's to do with the SVP. And I know that, that part of what the SVP does here and, and all out throughout the country is the wonderful work of reaching out to those who haven't got much. So let's pray for Richard and for all the SVP here and, and throughout the country who are working. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. And now let's ask Mary to add her prayers to ours. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Sit down. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. And pray, sisters and brothers, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Be pleased, Almighty God, to accept your church's offering, so that she who is aware that her beginnings lie in the incarnation of your only begotten Son may rejoice to celebrate his mis mysteries on this solemnity who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For the Virgin Mary heard with faith that the Christ was to be born among people for people's sake by the overshadowing power of the Holy Spirit. Lovingly she bore him in her womb that the promise to the children of Israel might come about and the hope of nations be accomplished beyond all telling. Through him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim, 
Holy, holy, holy Lord, of course. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, that by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, may they become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and until your resurrection, until we come again in glory. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with, Malcolm, our, with Francis our Pope and Malcolm our Bishop and all the clergy and all your faithful people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours for ever and ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence to the Father in the words our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord.
be with you always. Let's offer each other a sign of that peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the holy sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things, and I passionately desire to receive you into my soul. If I am not capable now of receiving you sacramentally, come spiritually into my soul, so that I may unite myself wholly to you, now and forever. Amen.
Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and his name will be called Emmanuel. Let us pray. Confirm in our minds the mysteries of the true faith, we pray, O Lord, so that confessing that he who was conceived of the Virgin Mary is true God and true man, we may, through the saving power of his resurrection, merit to attain eternal joy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Shall we say the prayer for the parish? Spirit of the living God, Fall afresh on us, let us, hold us, fill us, lead us. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on us. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Go forth in peace. Alleluia. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you.